Hello, everyone. Welcome to the market update for Tuesday, December the 7th. A lot going on over the last uh, few trading days. Um, I, I'll point that out when we get to the charts. Uh, there's a, there's quite a bit of uncertainty. Uh, I talked a little bit about this last Thursday. We, we were kind of at a spot where we could go either way. Um, there could be, you know, and and now I think today is giving a little bit more clarity as to the direction. I'll, and like I said, I'll show you that when we get to the charts. And I'm going to start adding some stocks, uh, quite a few stocks, back into the portfolio to see if we can take advantage of it. Uh, now, there's always a worry that uh, you can get false moves, but that's always going to be the risk. Um, you know, if you're waiting for certainty to make your trades or waiting for, you know, a guaranteed uh, success, uh, it just never happens. There are there are situations that do have higher probabilities, um, but uh, you have to you have to analyze the conditions you're in and and um, and then adjust. If 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 we get a reversal from here, um, yeah, it could hurt you a little bit getting stopped out of trades that you're entering into. Um, but if you manage those trades properly and you and you can get out and recognize the a reversal quickly, uh, you can preserve capital and and uh, still be okay and be ready for the next move that, that could start to take off. But in order to, to really get things going and we're down a little bit in the portfolio, to really get back positive, you got to take advantage of, of conditions like this. And, and um, I'll, I'll review those conditions here as we go along. As far as the, the uh, direction alerts, uh, we, we were kind of in that oversold, not extremely oversold, but we were in that oversold area here. Um, this is the uh, momentum indicator. We're moving in this direction now, so we're we're definitely not in uh, an area where this rally today is done. In fact, it looks like if it is a start of a rally, we're in the early early uh, parts of it. Uh, I mean, there could be a ways to go here. We could get that uh, that end of the year rally that uh, that many have been predicting. Breadth indicator is doing the same thing. It was uh, it was over here in the oversold area. It's now in the trending area, but it's moving in the right direction. We do want to keep an eye on that to make sure that that breadth is keeping up with the market move. That there are a lot of stocks participating in the rally and not just a few. You know, one of the things we saw uh, a couple of weeks ago was we had the market up for a couple of days. And almost everything was down as far as individual stocks. The, the only stocks were up were Apple and Microsoft. Uh, there was only a handful of stocks that were holding the market up. And so it was misleading. You know, if you just looked at the indexes and said, oh, the, the, the NASDAQ was up today, uh, or the Dow was up today, uh, it wasn't telling the whole story. And that's why we do all this analysis. That's why we look at the internals of what's going on because there's clues there that can tell you whether the rally is healthy, uh, whether it's not, um, and you've got to pay attention to those things um, uh, because if you're just if you're just looking at you know whether the the market is up or down um, compared to the day before, um, you're you're going to make a lot of bad decisions. Uh, and and just in the price action I've talked about, you know, I've, I've showed you on the charts that. You could have an up day in the market, but it, it gapped up and now it's trading lower than where it opened. That's a very bearish near-term price action. Uh, that's not something to be excited about or be aggressive. You don't want to be overly aggressive jumping into the market in those conditions. So uh, it's very important that you learn these little little clues. Uh, sentiment is still remained high. It never really dropped much. Uh, now, again, that always concerns me that you know that uh, there, there's a fear never entered the market, um, but since I wasn't expecting a larger correction here, uh, you know I wasn't overly concerned that that there wasn't too much fear in the market. I did, I was a little concerned that um, uh, that uh, um, that there was just a you know a, a complete. Um, just go in and buy this dip uh, mentality 
there wasn't any any sort of concern about that. And guess what? That did kind of play out where we did have that next move down. We did have another move down that, that did kind of spook some people there. We saw the big spike up. Uh, so I thought, uh, you know, that was probably enough of a, of a near-term fear that, that um, could lead to a little bit of a bounce, and I think that's what we're getting here. But, um, and, and you know, what you should see in a good, healthy rally, uh, you know, there's a, there's a Wall Street saying that many of you are probably familiar with if you've been trading for a little while, but it says that, that markets tend to climb a wall of worry. Um, healthy uptrends are usually met with that the, the bad news is coming out and and it creates uncertainty and, and it creates doubt, but the market keeps going higher despite that, that doubt. Um, again, that's important to recognize because it, it, it cause, cause the, the opposite is true when the market is over the confident, when everyone says to buy and everyone's telling you to buy, and you feel absolutely confident to buy because everyone's telling you to buy. That's when you're at a top and that's the most dangerous time to be entering a market or entering new positions is in, is when there's certainty. There's, there appears to be certainty. Um, so if you're able to recognize that and smart enough to recognize that, it's not, again, that's not a mathematical equation that you can say, well, you know, one plus one equals two. And so that's what I'm going to do is when I see one plus one, it, it'll equal two. It's, it's a little bit more vague. It's, it, 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 so you, but you have to kind of pay attention to that sentiment out there that, um, Hey, the fact that we're, we're getting some bad news that comes out or, or people are coming out and saying, oh, I don't, I'm not, not quite sure this rally is going to continue, but the market keeps going higher. That's a good, that's a good sign that you're in a healthy uh, uptrend because you're climbing that wall of worry. Um, and so, um, so as we kind of go forward here, if this is a good uptrend here, don't, don't be surprised if you see a little, blips along the way, more COVID stuff, news that comes out that uh, causes the market to pause a little bit. Because um, remember, when you're in that nice, healthy uptrend, you're, you're going to be stair-stepped. You're going to have an impulsive move, and then you're, the market will reevaluate. This is where you kind of get that worry, you know, well, are, are we going to keep going up? Um, you know, is, is, is everything, is, should I still keep buying? And then it takes off again. The confidence takes off, and then you get that worry, and then the confidence takes off. When you when you reverse the the trend, you get the confidence things are going up, and then you get the panic that <laughs> you get the panic selling that drops you down, and then you wonder is it gone down far enough? Is this a buying opportunity? That kind of tends to be that sucker's rally. Then you get another move down. These emotions are that, that's what's showing up in that stair step process is that shift in the motion between confidence and uncertainty, um, and so you can see is when we talk about that term climbing the wall of worry that's that's that uptrend you have an impulsive move up you have a step you're climbing that wall and that's you're climbing the steps of that wall so to speak and that's kind of um, what you would expect to kind of kind of take place. And I'll show you that as we kind of look at the charts here. Uh, so sentiment still still relatively high. Um, as far as uh, uh, buy sell ratios, you can see that we reached a kind of an extreme level here. Um, we should start to see the market rally off of this and see that that those ratios start to change, meaning seeing more of these stocks go from sell back to buy and um you can see when we've reached some of these peaks it's it's cut it's been you know it started to move back in the opposite direction so this is definitely an extreme enough peak back here we were saying yeah this is wide but it, again it could get wider and it did um but but th and and you know there are situations where it has gotten wider than this but those are really rare situations so this is definitely an area where I look at this and I'd say, boy, this is where I want to be more aggressive buying right now. Um, we've reached kind of that extreme in the, in the buy sell ratios. I want to be a little bit more aggressive in my buying, jump back into that portfolio. Um, the sentiment 
has dipped way down, so we're nowhere near that extreme level. Plenty of room to run. Didn't get down low enough to where it was really oversold down here, but um, again, we weren't expecting a big, a big correction here. At least I wasn't. Um, I felt it would be a little bit more of a kind of an average correction. And again, I could still be wrong. I'm not suggesting that I know the future and that um, you know this market's going to rocket right back up again. And in fact, I've been known to feel really confident one day and then have something happen in the market. It just completely reverses that, um, but uh, I think things are looking looking pretty good overall right now to jump back in. Uh, let's go to the charts here, and I'll show you what was concerning me all the way up to yesterday. Uh, let's switch this over to candlesticks here. So, you know, we had the pullback right here, and and um, you know, one of the things that, that was concerning me last Thursday was that we were, we, we, we didn't have any support anywhere. We 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 pulled back. Um, and uh, we were breaking that support level, but there was nothing, no other support down in this area here. And I'm still kind of a little bit concerned about that on some of these charts that, uh, that we kind of reversed where there's really no, no reason to reverse there. And then what we got was Friday, we had the, the excuse me, Thursday, actually Thursday. So that was Wednesday. Thursday, we had the attempted rally back up. We came back above that support level right there. Friday, we tried to open higher. We gapped up, but we faded right here. So, and then yesterday, we, we um, um, gapped up a little bit and, and managed to move higher, but we couldn't close above the opening of, of Friday. This looked more choppy. So we have this move down right here. Now we're trying to rally back up and what are we, how are we doing it? We're back and forth like this. Well, remember, if you understand the stair step, you know, usually whenever you see a, a stock moving sideways, you want to pay attention to the direction it was moving in before it moved sideways. That's where it's more likely to go after it's done moving sideways. So here we have this sharper move down, and then we're getting this choppy sideways move. What I was worried about was we're not done falling. You know, we didn't have any major support right here. We're trying to rally in more of a choppy fashion. We could have another flush out move where we, we drop lower. Okay. And that, and that's why yesterday on the rally, I just, I, I, I bought a couple things just in case uh, it, it was not a sucker's rally. But then we get this nice, solid move higher today. Big move higher today. Uh, we're close to all-time highs again. We're right back into this breakout area here. Now, that is a big move over a few days right here, especially a one-day move like today. It's possible we see it pause a little bit. We see a little bit more of a sideways move here, and that would be good because that would confirm this is definitely looking like an impulsive move now. If it's back and forth, that would be more corrective, and it'd be more likely that that um, that we're heading higher. So don't don't be don't be concerned if tomorrow we're we're flat or down a little bit, or over the next few days we're, we we have a little bit of a pause. We may not. We may charge right to new highs first, but. Um, uh, it's it's definitely, you know, we're at a point here where we've retraced this move down far enough to where it's it, the probabilities would suggest we're much more likely to go higher from here. And that's the, basically the same on most, most of the other indexes. Here's the Dow. Look at the Dow. I mean, the Dow never really looked choppy through here. It looks like here, that looks impulsive. So you got impulsive down, impulsive up. What have I always told you? You know, when you're when you're talking about that stair step, impulsive, corrective, impulsive, corrective. Typically, when you reverse trend, you get back-to-back -back impulsive moves in the opposite direction. From an uptrend into a downtrend, you often get impulsive up, followed by impulsive down, and then it'll you know get corrective down, corrective. When you reverse from a downtrend into up uptrend, you typically you'll get impulsive down, impulsive up. Well, that's what that looks like: impulsive down, impulsive up. You could get corrected. We could get a little bit of a pause here over the next few days, but that's definitely bullish looking. Okay. Now here's a this is this is a good example of 
the rever bearish reversal, you had impulsive up, here's a little step, impulsive up, impulsive down, corrective, impulsive down, corrective, impulsive down, corrective, impulsive down, impulsive up. It, it's acting, it, I mean, these are, you know, I call these trend fundamentals, but if you haven't gotten that down, spend a lot of time getting that down. I mean, if you have to take a full month and, and just get that part of, of trend analysis down to where you can recognize it, understand that the stocks don't perfectly move in that way, uh, but if you can understand that concept of stair steps and impulsive and corrective moves and how how trend trend reversals i got you know i've got those recordings out there you can go to the, the youtube channel and find the, the the basic trend analysis uh channel or uh, training i did um man i'm telling you that'll make a huge difference in your trading just that alone and then you can build on that and and but but you've got to learn to recognize uh trend behavior um and it's not going to perfectly work every time, but it, it gives you such a big edge. When you're reading charts, you can start to feel like you know what's what's likely to happen next, even though you can't perfectly know what's going to happen next. Uh, QQQ chart. Um, now, this one seems to be finding that support at that breakout area right there. Uh, you know, this looks like, you know, that ABC had a big move up today. I'm still a little concerned that this looks like a head and shoulders pattern. But the, this move was big enough to where uh, it, it could it could be that that is the correction. What we would look for then is typically on your shoulder, your, the head and shoulders pattern, your left and right shoulders will will terminate in about the same spot. So if we get a day where the Nasdaq 100 breaks out above that and, and really closes above it, because it can have an intraday high above it and then dip back down, but if it can close above this area right here, that would be strong additional confirmation that 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 the nasdaq is is roaring back and should continue to move higher okay so so there's still a little, maybe a little bit of doubt there in the nasdaq 100 it didn't pull back as far as the other indexes so you worry that that maybe it still hasn't corrected enough but uh, that again that's a nice solid move today and I'm talking like this, but you know, obviously we could go into the close where all this fades and that and those strong candles look weak at the end of the day. I, again, I'm, but we're, I think we're close enough to the end of the day to where it still looks solid. I, I don't see anything that would cause us to fade there and change that this outlook. Um, and so I'm going to assume that those are going to finish pretty strong. The Russell 2000, again, very much like the S and P, it had a little bit of a choppy. Uh, moved here that, that could possibly set up for another move down. Really, the difference though on this one, obviously we had a nice big move up today. One of the bigger percentage moves up, two and a half percent move up. But if you look at that longer term chart, we also are basically coming off this lower support area right there. There was still a little bit of room to drop, maybe a little bit further. But um, even if we did, there's very little downside uh, move left likely compared to the upside potential. And so I think I think the uh, Russell is recovering as well. You watch I, I'm all confident right now and watch on Thursday I'll be I'll be coming out saying the sky is falling. Something will happen and I'll be like, sell everything. <laughs> I I you know, I, I I grew up as a baseball player. I uh, I played all the sports, but I you know I often compare baseball as teaching me the most about trading as any other sport. But one of the things that the negative things that baseball teaches you, any any of you that have played, you know what I'm talking about, is superstition. You are you become so superstitious, you know, because the game is so brutal, and it's so hard to succeed. It's so hard to hit a baseball. And if you're good at hitting a baseball, you fail 70% of the time. That means you're good. You're one of the best. Um, if you only get three hits out of 10, you're one of the best. Uh, but because it's so brutal that way, you you focus on the most ridiculous things. You know, if you if you have a hitting streak and, you know, you, you happen to have your hat on backwards or something like that, you, you feel like that was the reason why you had the hitting streak. Uh, well. 
I, I've carried this over into my trading to where, you know, when I start to get really confident in, in patterns and, and, and it always seems like it, it, it jinxes it, you know, some disaster comes out of nowhere and, uh, and I have to, I have to kind of reverse. It's not true. I mean, uh, but uh, it, it it has happened a few times where I've been really confident, and, and the opposite has happened a few days later that uh, that I, I revert back to that uh, baseball um, superstition sometimes where I, sh I don't I shouldn't even talk about it. <laughs> when I'm confident about the market, don't say anything, and then it'll play out uh, great. Um, all right. So now, and again, if I didn't have to. If I didn't have to get into a class and tell people what I thought, that'd be easy. I could just keep it to myself. But, um, you know, people are, are paying me to, to, to give me their, give me my opinion and, and to keep them on the right track. So, but anyway, that's what I'm seeing there. If we move on to the others, TLT, I, I talked about this breakout area here. It looks like we broke out and then kind of came back down a little bit. I still think that bonds look like they're in an uptrend. I think this was just a breakout and retest of that breakout. And, you know, you have another low resistance area right through here that we're, we're right at right now. So we'll see if that holds. Now, typically, um, what, what could stall this rally in bonds is, I've mentioned this many times, is that very often bonds and the market will move in the opposite direction. So if the market's rallying, you'd probably see bonds pull back. So that is a dynamic we'll look for to see if, if maybe this is a ends up being a little bit of a false breakout and, and we start working our way back down. Um, probably the key areas, well, obviously you'd want to see if we get back and close below this, this breakout area right here. The previous low, the higher lows are down here. So this is the this would be an area where you, you'd say that you know you're 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 now acting more like a downtrend or, or you've broken that uptrend a little bit high, higher high right there higher low down here that's that's pretty far away so uh, this would be kind of the no man's land area if we enter into that area it, we really don't know which direction it could be going either way and you could look for how this this acts as it moves back down if it's impulsive and then corrective impulsive correct if you start seeing that little impulsive corrective uh alternation there uh you could uh it, it could act like a near turn downtrend or something like that uh or again if it holds and, and goes right back up again now it, they can the bonds and the market can move in the same direction so I don't want just to immediately assume that, that bonds have to come down because I'm bullish on the market. Um, but that, that is just something to keep an eye on that, uh, you know, bonds will come down quite a bit after breaking out. We'll see if it, uh, we'll see what happens uh, over the next few days and see if it continues to, because if, if it does move down <clears throat> with the market going higher, that would confirm the uptrend. That would, that would make more sense with the uptrend. Um, and uh, so that that would, you know, but the current trend right now is still up. I don't see, any, you know, it hasn't shown me yet that it's reverse trend other than being down a couple of days. And so I, as of right now, I'm still assuming that the, the bond trend is still up. Gold, again, gold, we're kind of in this no man's land here. I did mention the major support is down here. Hold on, let me move this chart up a little bit. The major support is down here. Obviously, this previous high is is significant. If it could break above that, it would be very very bullish. It did break. We had a, this range right here that did break out above and then came right back down. We've got impulsive down right now, and the behavior over the last week or so has been corrective. So I would I would assume that it's going to have another move lower. It seems to have held right here at this support area. This is a little bit of a minor support right here. It was one of the higher lows as this thing was trending up recently. If it breaks that, it's going to likely come down to this low and retest it again. Um, if it keeps moving higher, if it rallies up from there, 
you know, you just have to see if it's alternating between impulsive and corrective. This is, it's just in a no man's land right now. It could go either way, could find support right here and start moving up. The behavior would indicate that it's more likely to go down just because you had impulsive down and corrective. But you remember, you had impulsive up and corrective, and, and the, the behavior would indicate it should have gone higher, and it didn't. So gold's been very hard to predict, at least for me. Um, uh, but uh, I would be tend to be a little bit more bearish on the near term on gold and, until I see it uh, start acting more like an uptrend. Oil, oil's pulled back uh, pretty deep. It's had a nice strong move the last uh, couple of days right here. And if you look at the bigger picture on this, this just looks like it's it's kind of completed a pullback within the uptrend. So there's higher high, higher low, higher high. With this coming off the lows, this, it does look like it's still putting in a higher low. So it looks like maybe oil is going to resume the uptrend. This is a deeper pullback, though. I do want to point that out from this move up. Very deep retracement. That can be an early warning sign that maybe things are starting to roll over a little bit. So am I as confident in oil rebounding and going back up as I, as I was on some of these earlier ones? Nah, not as much. But... Um, you know, oil, it, it's it's acting, this is definitely acting impulsive right here. And um, I would I would tend to be a little bit more bullish on, on oil, at least as of right now. We may jump into another oil stock, uh, not a ton of them, but at least have one in the portfolio that in case oil does start taking off again. Uh, the dollar uh, still acting like an uptrend. Um, again, higher highs, higher lows. And this recent pullback right here started to go back up. Today's a bearish reversal candle. So, and and this is this doesn't look overly impulsive as it's moved up. You know, notice how it, it, again when I when I talk about how how can I tell between the difference between impulsive and corrective looking. Notice a move uh, like right in through here. Notice how every day was higher. It opened higher. It closed higher. It it, it almost you see how it's it just it just every day was building on the day before. Look at this move right here. Here's where it opened. Here's where it closed. It opened. This one wasn't too bad. It opened right about where it closed. Closed higher. But then look at this day. It opened all the way back down here at the previous day's open. Closed just barely higher than the day before. This day it, it opened uh, a little bit. Actually, it opened a little bit higher and closed lower than it opened. So it didn't it didn't add on to that previous day. It didn't have an intraday high that went higher, but it didn't close any higher. This day it managed to open higher and, and close a little bit higher, but it had this tail came off the highs of the day. This is sluggish. This is not a real strong, impulsive move. Up, this one up, this one day up, this day up. I mean, these are these are stronger upward moves. This this is more sluggish. And so when you see that kind of, you know, it's 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 moving higher, but it's, it seems like it's, it's a hard attempt to go higher. It's telling you that there are sellers there that are getting in the way, and that they could. It could be stronger sellers, and so although we moved higher here, this is this is worrisome the way it's moved higher here. Now that could change very quickly. You know, once you get up to a certain point, now maybe the buyers get a lot more confident that the dollar is going higher, and, and you might see more of that impulsive move. I mean, that's kind of what we're seeing on the S and P. You know, if that, that if you look at that S, SPY chart again. It again, it started to move up, but it was sluggish. It just wasn't taken off. But now we're taking off. So now it could be the buyers are now having their, that confidence and it's it's ready to go. So that's something to keep an eye on with the dollar. Is does it does it take off? But it's acting like an uptrend so far. I don't see any. You got the higher high, higher low. It's you know I don't see anything there. If it dips below here and goes to a lower low, that's a warning sign. That would uh, tell me that, that maybe that dollar trend, especially if it did it right here, because 
it would tell you that you'd have a lower high right here and then if it went to a lower low it could be in the process of reversing trend so something to keep an eye on there the VIX this is another reason why it's more bullish uh, you know so we had a little bit of an update yesterday but the VIX really didn't come down much you know here was a big spike it was still elevated and so you have kind of that sluggish move higher and the, the concern is still there. People are hedging. Now you see the VIX drop down on a big up day like today. Um, that that tends to give me more confidence in the rally that the, 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 the VIX is coming down quite a bit. Volatility is decreasing quite a bit. We should start to see the, the market um, start rallying back up. But Again, one thing I pointed out, is, and if you look at a longer term chart, uh, maybe it's harder, maybe it's easier to see here on a one year chart. But, you know, we've had these lower highs, lower lows, and now we're starting to, you know, we kind of come an even high right here. It could be that we're starting to see a period where volatility starts increasing. And this is this is the the VXY is what you can. This is the ETF or ETN is what it's called that you can trade um, the VIX futures. It doesn't always look the same as the the VIX chart. The the service doesn't pull up the VIX actual VIX chart because it's not a tradable in, instrument. The VIX itself. Um, but if you have another charting service and you type in VIX, usually you can see the the, the chart of the VIX, and it's uh, it, it it you know most time the charts look about the same, but sometimes you can see a little more detail in the VIX chart of of of, uh, of volatility. Um, for our purposes, the VXY works just fine as far as analyzing. Another bullish sign, again, we want to compare the NASDAQ 100 to the chip stocks, the SMH. This tends to be a, a driver of the NASDAQ 100. You see the chip stocks about to break out to a new all-time high right here after this ABC pullback. Now, this, there was a hint of this yesterday. Look at that hammer, bullish hammer formation. Wasn't too surprising that uh, we're seeing a strong move in the SMH today. When you see a bullish hammer formation at the end of what looks like wave A, wave B, wave C, that's that's a that's a signal to get aggressive and and chip stocks right there, but um not not surprising that we're seeing those rally. But that's a good bullish sign right there. Um Dow Transports, compare this with the Dow Industrials. Nice strong move in the transports after a pretty deep pullback right here. That that looks like an impulsive move up. And then Bitcoin had a little bit of a sell-off recently uh, and had a kind of extreme, had a little bit of a flash crash that happened over the weekend where it dipped down very dramatically and then came back. You know, it could be that this is a ABC pullback and we might start seeing Bitcoin rally back up. I would imagine if the market rallies back up, there'd be a little bit more confidence to get into Bitcoin again. And, and a lot of times after you see that panic selling that we're, whether it's panic selling or a, a computer glitch uh, that caused that big drop on Saturday. Um, I don't know, but that can sometimes mark a little bit of a near-term bond that you can rally off of. All right, so that gives us our foundation. Uh, um, we're, I'm pretty bullish as far as market conditions. A um, couple of individual stocks, and I'm gonna add some things to the portfolio. Um, under the retail sector, there's quite a few that I, I like. Uh, this KRUS, we've watched this a, a few times, 96 strength rank. Nice little pullback right here. So we had this long drawn out move and I think I missed, I can't remember if I missed that breakout. I think I missed it because I just got lost patience because it moved sideways for so long. But I had the big breakout move it's kind of pulled back, it hasn't pulled back all the way to the breakout area, but pretty close and it's starting to move back up again. This is one to maybe keep an eye on. Could be one to jump back into. Maybe, I'll, maybe I won't miss the next move possibly. Um, 
if we go to this boot barn, B O O T, 95 strength rank. Nice little pullback. It's gone back to a buy signal. I might add this one in. Um, I like that pattern. It's gone back to a buy signal. I want to get some retail stocks in, in the portfolio there. I think a lot of them have a chance to start to start doing pretty well. That was already done pretty well, but it, it, it didn't get beat up too bad on the pullback, market pullback. Looks like there's buyers there. It looks like it wants to go higher. Another one in retail here. This HBP, 93 strength rank. We are moving down a little bit on the strength rank list, but a lot of stocks are not quite out that 98 strength rank right now. A nice little corrective move here. Looks like an ABC correction here. Back to a buy signal. This might be one I add. A nice little uptrend there if it can hold this, this support and continue to move higher. By the way, the reason why I like these, now you could wait for a breakout, but you have this sideways move right here. If it does break out, remember the rule of thumb on these, these, these consolidated moves. There's a tendency that once you break out, that the stock could move up the same distance as the top and bottom of that range. And so it, there's real potential for these things to, to have some really big moves after they break out. Now, do I have to wait for the breakout? You could. Um, and the danger in, in getting in now, I'm going to go ahead and get in now, but the danger is, is that it could still move sideways for three more months or something before it finally breaks out. I don't anticipate that just because the market has already been in the sluggish range and if, if buyers are anxious to, and things have pulled back quite a bit, but I think the, the buying uh, would be a little bit stronger if people are, if they're, if they're really confident in this, in this trend continuing. I think it it push a lot of these uh, to break out. Um, another one in retail here. Is this MOV 93 strength rank? This has a buy signal today. I'm probably not going to add this one though, just because I, I don't want to add. There's other ones I want to add. I'll show you from the from a watch list. But again, have this nice bowl shaped move broke out. It's kind of pulled back to it. Looks like it's starting to move back up again. This is one that looks looks pretty good. And then one last one. is this GMS, 92 strength rank. And again, under the retail sector, this one is breaking out. This little pullback right here, looks like it's breaking out on the buy signal, but today, I, again, I'm not gonna add this one because there's other, other ones I like, but again, this, is, this could be one you consider. It's breaking out to put a stop down below here and, and see if that thing can take off. All right, let's take a look at uh, the portfolio. Um, still down, you know, about 9,000. I only have two stocks. Now, Lily, I I actually moved my stop down low. I didn't know why I had my stop where I had it. I, it might have been just a little bit of a random. I couldn't remember where why I put my stop where I did. Um, I, I As I looked at this, I still like this. There's a corrective pattern and that this thing could start to move back up. So I, this is a pretty significant intraday low right here. So I went ahead and just put the stop down below there. Yes, it, it does increase the, the risk a little bit, uh, not by much uh, according to the calculation I made. Um, now I'm not in the habit of, of moving stops down um, and it, definitely not just for the sake of moving stops down. And this could backfire. Um, as you know, if you've been following me, I'm pretty disciplined with my stops. It's not like I don't have a problem stopping out. And I could. I could just stop out of this one and get back in and again if it starts moving back up. But like I said, I couldn't, I couldn't remember why I had the stop where I had. I couldn't find any, any support or resistance, significant support or resistance that was in that area, somewhere in this area here. And, and so, you know, I, I, I didn't know if maybe I just picked a random number, uh, not thinking that 
it would get down that far. Um, but anyway, I, I so I adjusted the stop on that one. We'll see if this one can can turn around. I had a nice little reversal day yesterday, down a little bit today. Sometimes it'll retest those hammer formations down here, and, and hopefully that's all it's doing today. Um, but I think even if this one ends up not working out, I think we'll make it up on the other trades I'm going to enter today. The other one in the portfolio is um, LPX, which is working great. I got back into this one. This is breaking out again. Uh, I think I got in on this day right here. I think we got I got on this last Thursday, if I'm not mistaken. But it's working out. So what do I want to add? Well, if we go into our watch list here, there's quite a few. Um, LPI was an was an oil stock. Now, um, this one isn't at a buy signal yet, but again, I'd, I'd like this pullback right here. I've talked about this a number of times while we were going through the, the watch list. I like this impulse move up. This looks like an ABC. This is about as deep as you'd want that ABC to pull back, and you've had two solid up days. I'm going to go ahead and get in on the hold signal with my stop down below here. Um, because I, I I want to have an oil stock, and most all the oil stocks are at, at hold signals right here. But I think the oil is, is moving higher, and uh, I'm going to have a little bit more of an aggressive entry. Now, part of this is because I know how to read price action, and those last two days is, are pretty solid. If you're not at that level yet, then just wait for the wait for the buy signal. And again, it, there's nothing wrong with with making it simple like that and just waiting for that confirmation um and we're not too far away from that uh you know maybe a little ways away from that getting back to that buy signal but i like the reward to risk right here i you know by getting in right here and getting my stop down below here and keeping that risk pretty small if i if a buy signal ends up up here i'd still want to put my stop down below here and now my risk is much greater these are all there again there's no perfect trade management you know process um, um and if you're looking for a real strict approach to to trade management i'm not your guy because i i tend to have a little bit of a a little bit of leeway with some of my decisions um and a lot of it is because of my ability to read price action and and i can often see things happening ahead of time so if i see things falling apart and i don't yet have a signal to stop out my opinion is why not just stop out now i i, I see it coming i see that i'm likely to get stopped out why not get out right now um or you know the just just like with um that uh, previous trade on um oh, what was it on uh, l o y it's like you know it, it it's looking like it's at it, that sea leg of an a b c pattern um now this doesn't have a stronger bullish reversal to have me have confidence but you know it, it it's it's Give you know, I feel like give it another couple days, see if it can hold. Make sure it doesn't drop below this low right here. I, I can sometimes adjust my decisions. Um, now a lot of that, just so you know, comes from my option trading background. I do a lot of option trades where you it's a whole different way to trade. You you've got to you've got to have a lot of flexibility. You can't have a solid. Um, you know rules based program that's rigid it it has to have a little bit of flexibility to it and um um but um uh, anyway so i'm going to go ahead and and uh, let me go back to that watch list i'm going to go ahead and get into lpi right here i'm going to put my stop down below this level here the low is at 51.22, so I'm just going to put my stop at 51. Now, another thing I'm going to do is I've been, 
I've been keeping my, um, let me close this out real quick here. Let's go to the portfolio. I then try to keep my amount in each trade to about 10,000 around there. Sometimes it's been a little bit over that. I'm going to try to drop it down to about 7,000 to try to get into more trades. Um, I think we could have a broad base rally, but if it, if you know if, there, if there's a tendency for some of these sectors to take take off and some maybe to be a little bit sluggish, I want to make sure I don't miss any, and it, it'll allow me. There's a, there's a lot of potential trades I saw today that I, want, I might want to get into. I don't want to get in all one day, but um, I'm going to get in quite a few today. But I want to keep that uh, total amount per trade uh, down a little bit. So. So let's add this to port the portfolio, stock-specific class, my stock price at 51, and what would 100 shares look like? So right there, that's right where I'd want it to be, right at about 7,000. Um, oh, that's showing the risk per share is pretty high. Oh, no, I wasn't looking at the right one. Portfolio at risk is, eh, that's still a little bit high. 1.99, I want it to be down about one, one and a half. So let's go with 75 shares. All right, so 75 shares puts us at about a one and a half percent portfolio at risk and about 5,000 in the trade. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. All right, the other one I want to add is this check the glass here. This is just going to be going to a buy. I'll get the alert actually tonight, but going to a buy signal today. I like that pullback. Looks like it's getting ready to break out. Um, I'm going to put my stop down below this lowest point right here, which is at 29, stop 29.50. Stop price in here at uh, 29.50. Okay, I just put in 100 shares, but that's only 3,000, so we double out 200 shares. Just under 7,000, go a little bit higher, so do 250. 220. Okay, so 220, I'm about 7,000, a little over 7,000. Portfolio at risk, right under 1%, right at 1%, that should work fine. Okay, let's go ahead and purchase this. Another one on the list is NVIDIA. Uh, this one I think could be a big one if it, if it, but you had the, again, we had the, uh, the, Hammer candlestick formation. We saw that on the SMH, the chip chip in uh, ETF. Nice solid update today. Again, this is the type of move that Nvidia can make when buyers really get confident in it. And it may not, but I'm going to put my stop down below here in case I'm wrong. And let's see if this thing can take off. And I'm not waiting for the buy signal on this one. This is one I'm being a little bit more aggressive on as well. Uh, the stop price I had was at 280, which was below that that hammer low from yesterday. Um, I, this is expensive stock, so I'm, let's see here. It's,
I'm going to go 25 shares. It's going to be a little bit more than 7,000. It's 8,000. That's just a more expensive stock. Risk for, for portfolio at risk, right over 1%. So that's good. Uh, let's go ahead and add this. Um, Another one on the watch list. I like this K uh, C A M T. Again, another one that uh, we're real close to getting to that buy signal, but not quite there yet. But again, I like the I like the bowl shaped move. It broke out. And then you have this ABC pullback and then a nice solid up day that's getting us back above the bowl right there. So I like this one. I'm going to put my stop down below this recent low. If it drops below that, I'm probably wrong. And that's at about 42 is where that stop is. Uh, 150 shares would put us right at just under 7,000 and very little portfolio at risk, but half a percent, but I, I don't want to get that amount up to. I want to be able to get into other trades as well. So, um, I mean, the good news is if we get stopped out, we're only losing 600. We're typically we're going to be around that thousand dollar loss there. So let's go ahead and purchase and go to my portfolio. Uh, we still have a lot of cash still left. Forty two thousand. I'm not going to use it all, but. Um, so far, so good. Let's go to HBP. This is one we looked at. Uh, today, under that retail sector, onto a buy signal. I'm going to get the stop down below here. Again, I'm anticipating this is going to end up breaking out. Stop down below that area was about eight dollars and fifteen cents. I did that calculation before class, so just to save a little bit of time. But it's down below the bottom of that that sideways range there. Oops, what am I doing here? Five hundred. Eight hundred shares. Hmm. I go with seven hundred fifty shares. It's right close to that seven thousand. Again, very small portfolio at risk here. Let's purchase another one. Um, ALCS right here. This one's breaking out, so I'm going to be buying the breakout here. Then I'm going to put my stop down below here. Fifty-nine, sixty, fifty-nine $59.60, $59.60. hundred shares, pretty close to that 7,000. Let's go ahead and just go ahead and do that. hundred shares, purchase. And then 
one that you're familiar with that I got out of. Here's our CMT. Now we ran it all the way up to the breakout area right here. It had a, kind of a bearish reversal candle. I took the profits on it. It dropped. And it's come right back again. And again, this is what I'm teaching you here is it's okay to take profits if you think you're at a resistance area because you, 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 know, you might have a chance to get back in. I think this is a chance to get back in. Hopefully, it'll break out again and take off. It's been performing pretty well. So let's go ahead and re-enter this one. Um, I'm going to put a stop below that more that recent low down there that, um, that it just pulled back from. Stop is at six dollars and ninety-five cents. Well, we could do more than that. So we can do to 900 shares. Portfolio risk looks good. And, uh oh, did I do, I did, oh, I didn't do the right, <laughs> I didn't do it under the stock specific class here, so. Uh, let me make that, let's change that here. Put it in the wrong portfolio. All right, uh, stop price is at 6.95. I think I did 800 shares, no, not 900 shares. And we still have 22,000 left. There's one more I'm going to add, which was in that retail sector, that boot, boot barn. Um, stop, I'll put the stop down below here, which is 118, I'll just put $118. Okay, 55 shares would put us right at 7,000. Portfolio risk is low. All right, it's a lot of stocks to jump into. And we still have about 15,000 in cash if we need to add anything. But I just feel like this is where you wanna get aggressive. Um, hopefully I'm right. Let's take a real quick look at uh, Make sure that the indexes haven't <laughs> haven't changed dramatically. We're not fading into the close right after I did all this. No, we're still looking pretty good. All right, so that's where we're at. We'll see how things uh, work out. Um, you know, we really haven't done a lot as far as the portfolio over the last uh, two weeks. Really, in fact, mostly we've been getting out. But um, for those of you that have been just following each week um, again hopefully you're learning and what you're learning is patience when the conditions were looking bad and and it looked like we were going to get a bigger pullback what did we do we we got out of positions some of them we took losses on some of them we took profits on but we we got out by doing so, our drawdown was only about 9,000 from that $100,000 mark. 
but it allowed us to have $90,000 in cash to jump in when things had pulled back and it looked like they can go up again. That's, I think, where we're at right now. Now, hopefully that doesn't backfire because if it does, it, we're going to be, we're going to have another drawdown, but we'll do the same thing. And if, and hopefully if we just turn around and start selling off again, hopefully we, I can manage it to where we don't lose more than 10000 again. Maybe we're only down to $80,000, but we still have a bulk of cash that we could jump back into when it does bottom and start moving back up. Um, as we start, to, if we do start taking off right here, we start getting into that overbought area on the indexes, those, those direction alerts we look at, where we start hitting uh, extreme overbought conditions on, on some of the positions we're in, I'll start trimming. I'll start taking some profits off the table. Um, and uh, I may even, if we're in some of these, some of these positions just start stalling out, I may exit them. If we see some nice patterns on some of the, the um, when we're looking for the stock specific um, uh, trades, I may exit the ones that are lagging and, and get into the ones that look like they're moving again, move, move things around there. We might do some of that, but at, at least we're starting to have a little bit more activity here. You know, there are going to be these updates where we don't really do anything. Um, but today's an example of, hey, when the conditions are there and it looks like it's time to jump, we're going to jump. And uh, hopefully it works out. And hopefully that, in hindsight, hopefully this becomes a learning experience and hopefully a positive one. And um, we can see things kind of take off from here. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a great uh, week. We'll see you uh, Thursday for the stock-specific class. Bye now.